in ceremonies begin for a new cadre of local government practitioners here on Grand Bahama. The Deputy Prime Minister weighing in on the controversial seawall issue in Smith's Point and preserving the multi-million dollar conch industry in the Bahamas, the focus of a special forum. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Shoshina Rola. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping news following the June 22nd local government election, the newest group of elected councillors for the City of Freeport Local Government District were sworn in to serve for the next three years. Our Kimberly Mullings was at the Administrator's Office for the occasion and tells us that the ceremony was memorable, but the outcome was unusual. A cross-sector of the community, including family members and friends, were all on hand to witness the official swearing-in ceremony Wednesday morning. Prior to the newly elected Freeport Local no Government District say. councillors being sworn in, Administrator long. Preston Cunningham right. issued a charge and congratulating so them for their success at the polls and admonished the councillors to do three things while in office for the next three years. As you serve, one, for God's sake, respect your peers. Respect your peers. Two, respect the leadership. Three, respect democracy. In the city of Freeport District, a total of 8,530 votes were cast. For the city's sake, he asked them to do away with any malpractices and to not disappoint those who voted for them. One, put aside pettiness. Two, put aside selfishness. And three, put aside party politics and serve with distinction. The Family Island Administrator urged them to perform to the best of their ability and to be mindful that they are now in the public's eyes. Keep your hands clean. Keep your nose clean. The people who voted for you, who were so anxious for you to serve, trust me, they will watch every step you make during this journey. Following the administrator's charge, the councillors were sworn in. Elected as representatives for East Grand Bahama were Eris Hutchison and Dr. Charlene Reed Morris, Pine Ridge, Ravano Ferguson, and Ernie Barr. In Central Grand Bahama, both Frazette Gibson and Marco Carey were re-elected to serve, and the largest voter participation was in Marco City. Those elected to the three seats in that constituency were Earl Neely, Kendall Culmer Jr., and Bernard Grant, who was unable to attend the swearing-in. Following the swearing-in, the councillors exited the room to cast their votes for chief and deputy chief councillors and returned a short six minutes after with an alternative decision. The councillors opted not to vote for the chief and deputy chief councillors due to the absence of Councillor Bernard Grant. However, they plan to cast their votes next Thursday, July 6th, following the swearing-in of Councillor Grant. Kimberly Mullings, ZNS Network News. Well, the community of Smith's Point has been in dire need of a seawall, and the Free National Movement's administration say it is committed to bringing this project to fruition. In a candid interview with ZNS News, the Deputy Prime Minister talks about some of the issues surrounding that project and the way forward. Italia Hall reports. For some time now, coastal erosion has been an issue in the community of Smith's Point. The development of a seawall began last year to put an end to that issue. But in a recent report, the Parliamentary Secretary for the Ministry of Works, Iram Lewis, shared that the contract for that seawall was cancelled due to a number of issues. The Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable K. Peter Turnquist, is assuring residents that the seawall will be completed in a timely manner. We recognize that right now the coastline is exposed uh, and so if there is a major storm we will have some issues and so we want to get that done as quickly as possible. He adds that it is important to ensure that the wall is constructed properly and will be safe for residents in that community. It, it represents a significant investment of the Bahamian government and so we want to make sure we get value for money. We don't want to put a product there that is going to have issues in a year or two uh, and so uh, the, the ministry has done its work. Uh, they have looked at it and they've decided that this is the, the uh, uh, core that makes that is appropriate. Now, when it comes to the adverse impact this project is having on businesses in that area, 
The Deputy Prime Minister says that the government is aware of their concerns. We recognize that project has had a lot, um, uh, caused a, a significant hardship for them. Um, we are looking at what we can do for them. Uh, of course, you know, given the financial circumstance that the country's in, uh, we have, there's only so much that we can do. Uh, but I want them to know that we are looking at it. We are very much concerned about uh, the hardship that, they, that is being experienced as a result of this wall. And that is, again, one of the reasons why we've made the decision we've made to make a, make a change so we can get this thing done as quickly as possible and put them back uh, uh, in business. It's Halia Hall, ZNS Network News. Well, major stakeholders on Grand Bahama are concerned about the status of a vital industry and have formed a partnership to launch a major educational initiative in attempts to protect this vital sector. Joan Davis Roll reports. It's a billion dollar business. Conk in the Bahamas is big business, and at every major cultural event in the country, you will find this most popular Bahamian delicacy on the menu and in great demand. Preserving this country's mega conch industry is what officials are attempting to do. Ministry of Fisheries Superintendent Clement Campbell. 99.9% of the restaurants in the Bahamas sell conch. So you think about that, then you think of the amount of conch that's export out of this country per year. So if you put all that together, it's billions of pounds of conch. Just think about it. You know, how much conch is consumed on a daily basis. So it's a high, high demand. And it just it's not just for the vendors. With the conch. There's also the vendors, the suppliers, the buyers, the consumers, and it goes on and on. So it's a lucrative business. A conch vendor workshop is planned for this Thursday from 6 to 9 p.m. to sensitize those involved in the conch business of the importance of conservation. Grand Bahama Port Authority Customer Relations Executive Nicole Colbrook says the port's goal is to ensure proper business protocols are being followed within this vital industry. The Grand Bahama Port Authority is pleased to partner with the Ministry of Tourism and the Rand Nature Center to host this workshop where we will advise vendors, seafood vendors in particular, about their responsibility as far as being licensed. So on Thursday we will remind them about their responsibility and the procedures for being licensed as a vendor. So we encourage you to come out to the workshop on Thursday to learn more about what is required and to get a business license to operate in the city of Freeport, which is mandatory. Joan Davis Roll, ZNS Network News. Grandmama getting a major economic boost. Over 400 women from around the world were on the island to attend the 77th Annual Minister Wives and Ministers of Widows Conference. Chairman of the International Association, Elder Bernita Josie, and Reverend Dr. Shari Kali say the purpose of the conference is to unite all women during a time of fellowship. This um, group of women, we travel all over the world. It's an interdenominational um, group of women and we are on five of the seven continents, 103 denominations. Everybody's been crying out they want to come back to the Bahamas. They've been here in 1990, the first time. They've come again in 2000, um, 2007, and then now they're back here again. And we were going to Nassau, but the Lord shifted it here in Grand Bahama. Some of the participants went on tours, and they have just been sharing with me just how grateful they are to be here. And they talk about the warmth of the people of the Bahamas, and every need that they have, people are here to meet their needs. And they really appreciate that. They, it, it makes them feel at home, away from home. Well, President of the Grand Bahama Christian Council, Pastor Peter Pinder, says he is humbled and honored to be a part of such an auspicious event. Wonderful thing when we are able to invite groups to our island from an economic standpoint, but especially when we have a religious group, uh, it, it adds another dimension. And as president of Grand Bahama Christian Council, I am really delighted that this group has chosen to come to uh, Freeport and the Bahamas to hold their convention. Stay with us. There's more news right after this break.